And hello once again. Uh, this is Billy Bedlam 66. Uh, this is part two of Who is the Great Whore of Babylon that sits on many waters? Yeah, this is part two. Now, in this part, we are going to get into the next book of the Bible in the Old Testament that deals with this great whore that sits on many waters. Now remember once again I tell you biblical prophecy has duality here. Um, in the first part of the book of Jeremiah in the lower chapters 30 and 31 they talk about the original ancient Babylon that sits in Iraq just south of Baghdad. Now once you go up to chapters 50 and 51 we are obviously not talking about ancient Babylon anymore. It talks about uh, how this Babylon will uh, go to the heavens and, uh, and inhabit the heavens. Uh, think space program, think satellites, all that kind of thing. Uh, it talks about great steel and iron industry. It talks about how it's divided by rivers. Now, now remember, you know, you have the rivers in Iraq. You know, you have... Uh, the Euphrates, and then as you go west, you're going to go over to areas like Egypt and that, where you have the Nile and all that. But those, just one river per country. Uh, there is one country that is actually quartered by rivers. Yeah, so we'll we'll get into that, and you and you will see that in the this part uh, later part of Jeremiah, you're going to start seeing things that can't possibly be describing. Um, uh, the Vatican, uh, like a deep sea port. The Vatican does not have a, a deep sea port. The Vatican does not deal in iron and, and steel. Um, it also does not have satellites in space. It does not have a huge military aviation program, which this modern day Babylon does. Um, so remember that when you go into it and you read these Bible verses, uh, be very careful about being biased and saying, oh, well, it's the Vatican or it's, you know, it's, it, it, it's got to be Jerusalem. Uh, by the way, Jerusalem is known, known as Sodom and Egypt, and Jerusalem will get pounded in the end days before the Jews living in Israel finally turn to Jesus. Uh, Jerusalem will get pounded, but Jerusalem does not... Uh, meet all these requirements because if you look at where Jerusalem's at it is not a seaside uh, uh, city and it does not have a deep sea port either so it can't be the great Babylon the whore of Babylon so we have to go from there um, you're going to start seeing this come together and as you do your mind's going to want to pull away from it and say nah I, I can't see that it's it's it, it that's too much to uh, think about and it, once you understand and you realize the identity of this great horror Babylon uh, you're going to be shocked and and maybe not it could be being a if you've done a lot of internet searches and you spend a lot of time studying secret societies and the new world order uh, you might just know what uh, this great horror Babylon is the identity but anyways uh, we will go from here and now we are going to look at the book of Jeremiah, chapters 50 through 51. So here we go.
All right, now you've seen the Bible verses uh, from Jeremiah, and as you can see, uh, they clearly confirm uh, I, the book of Isaiah. And you have to remember that with the Bible, uh, what you're dealing with is that no uh, Bible verse or prophecy um, identifies itself or confirms itself. It is always confirmed by other Bible verses from other chapters. Uh, the reason that's important is you have to understand that these prophets lived hundreds of years apart and thousands of miles apart. So they didn't know each other. They didn't get together and say, hey, let's pull off this little scam and kind of put all this old stuff together. We'll make some money by selling it on Amazon. No, it's nothing like that. These guys lived way far apart. They, they never knew each other, never met each other, these prophets. And it was the Lord that brought them this information and gave them this prophecy. That's how it can be confirmed is by going over the different chapters and realizing these prophets lived hundreds of years apart, you can find this information very clearly, it, it's, it's, and you can prove it. Now, looking at this, some of these prophecies can be attributed to a number of nations, like um, they produce steel, or they build an airplane, or they build a car. But you have to look at the nation that, originated this stuff ask yourself where did automobiles originate from where did airplanes originate from who and what country was the first to fortify the heavens as it says in Jeremiah who's the first to do that and who maintains control over that fortification to this day even though multiple countries have now put assets in the heavens or in space who still controls it all? Yeah. So I'm not going to give away any names because we still have another book to go through, and that's Revelations. And Revelations is a book of symbols. Now, remember one thing about symbols. People say, well, if it's a symbol, then it can't be real. Not so. We use symbols every day in our life. Everything is a symbol. A stop sign is a symbol. Okay? A yield sign is a symbol. That sign is a real object, but what it symbolizes is a greater truth that you are taught to understand. You see the red, you see the word stop, you know to stop right there at that intersection. You see the yield sign, you look to the right, you see the on-ramp coming up, you know to yield. Or if you're on the on-ramp, you know to yield to the traffic going by you on the, on the lane depending on where the sign is at. So you, these symbols are real. Now, in, in, in the book of Revelations, which is a book of symbols, um, these symbols are not literally real, but they denote real truths. And you can't have a woman who is a whore who is able to move her legs so that one foot is on, say, oh, I don't know, Australia, and another leg is on Africa. That is a symbol. What it means by saying that the whore sits on multiple waters is that the waters in this case are nations, tongues, people, which means that she has control over all of that. She sits on many waters on many different countries, on many different continents. And remember, there are seven continents. Remember about the seven kings. She will appoint seven kings, and she, they talk about the kings that come and, and go, and one's not uh, here yet, but will be, and he's only going to rule for a little while. These are the, the, the kings of her kingdom that she has created, which is called the beast. And in Revelations, we will deal with that, this beast. And you will begin to see exactly who this great whore is. By the way, this uh, great whore, this harlot of Babylon uh, that sits on many waters, she's also a daughter, and she's referred to in Isaiah as the daughter of the Chaldeans, which were a group that ruled uh, Babylon in ancient times. They were one group with one language that ruled of many people that ruled. So we can connect ancient Babylon to modern-day Iraq, and to this woman who's a mystery. Now, I'll give you another little hint. Uh, her connection to ancient Babylon is not just spiritual, but it's physical. 
Ask yourself a question, and, and don't forget about CNN and all that nonsense and that lies and that propaganda. Ask yourself, who sits in Baghdad that they lie about every day and says is no longer there, but it has the biggest military force in the world there and also has the po biggest political and, and diplomatic staff in Baghdad? Mm-hmm. Okay, so now you got an idea. Now you know, but I'm not going to give it up yet because we've got to go through Revelations first, and then I will give you all of the known indicators that we know of today. Uh, by the way, one thing I didn't include in there, and I forgot it, I could probably go back and, and add it, and I think I will, uh, is that Babylon will have its borders cut off, and there will be no way for people to escape. I suggest that all of you go out on the internet and type that sentence in. Uh, don't use Babylon. Just say uh, country has its borders cut off with no way of escape. Uh, you're probably going to get about 3,500 hits, but you are going to be amazed of what country pops up uh, within at least 100 of those. Now, there are countries around the world that are getting their borders closed down, mostly because of Ebola, but also because of a lot of political issues. But take a look at the biggest issue of what country is getting its borders shut down. But that doesn't appear to have its borders shut down unless you go into the forums and listen to people talk about uh, how that particular country will not give them a passport to leave the country or they have a passport but they're on some type of list. Ask yourself which country again has created a list so people cannot get out. And... Uh, so that's all for now. Uh, be looking for part three. I will do it later on tonight. I will get the revelations aspect done. Um, and like I said, uh, my name is uh, William Zabel. I uh, go by the name uh, Billy Bedlam 66 um, here on YouTube. And I hope you enjoyed uh, viewing this video and looking at the different Bible references. And, you know, if you're an atheist, don't get mad. Once again, it's... Um, I think you people are going to find out that you're included in this too, whether you're an atheist or not, because in the Bible, God says all men flee from Babylon. So he's not just concerned about Jews and Christians. He's concerned about all men. So you atheists out there got to understand, uh, he's rooting for you too. He, he wants you to leave this Babylon. So, you know, uh, just ask yourself what it is. And uh, in part three, we'll look at Revelation. So uh, have a good day. Bye.